Greetings, and welcome to another Lessons with Odin. This episode is another chapter in the Basic Stitches and Guidelines, Tips, Etc. series, where I will be showing you about the herringbone stitch. This one is characterized by the angular orientation of the beads, and in my opinion is a very nice quintessential stitch. It is very, very versatile, and so forth. You can do a lot of fun things, including add some nice inclusions on a wide, flat cuff. Use it to make ring bands and bales for any pieces you like, and it's actually quite sturdy. Later on the road, I will show you more about tubular herringbone as well, but be sure you understand the fundamentals of the flat herringbone first. So be sure you are subscribed to get updates on this series. For this project, I'm going to teach you using two colors of size 11 seed beads. You can use whatever seed beads you want with this stitch, but I found that round seed beads display the angular series of the beads better rather than delicas, which are a little bit on the flat side, especially if you use a very tight tension. But other than that, get together your beads, and your needle and thread. Now we're going to start off the stitch actually with a ladder stitch as opposed to starting off with herringbone just because of the way it's structured. Now there are ways to start herringbone without ladder stitch but that's going to be in another video. Most of the cuffs that I create such as this start off with a ladder stitch base and go from there. So I'm going to start off by threading on two seed beads of one color passing it down to the end of my thread. You can choose to put a stop bead if you'd like, but this thread is pretty, or this stitch is pretty secure, so you don't really need one if you don't want one. Now I'm going to take my beads, and since they're stacking right on top of each other, I'm just going to pass through the very first one. My tail is coming out. My tail is in this direction. My working thread is in this direction. So when I pull that tight, I form a loop with just one bead, next to each other like that. Then I'm going to take my needle and pass down the second bead to set up for the next stitch. I'm going to change color and add just one more bead and pass back through that same bead I'm coming out of so that we anchor our next stitch there. To set up for my next stitch I'm just going to pass through bead number three and continue until I have the length I want. So, I'm going to continue by adding on one more, pass through number three, then pass down number four. I'm going to change colors. I'm going to work in pairs so that I can understand where my rows are going to be. So I'm adding on my next bead, going down, like so, moving up to get ready for our next stitch. One more, go up, go down, and for good measure I'm going to add one more set of the next color. So one more here, set up, and my last one, like so, and finally down to finish the stitch. Now this is how I have my strip so far. Whenever you're creating your own patterns, you're always going to need an even number of beads in order to make the flat herringbone all the way through. We work with two beads at a time when we move, so an odd number is not going to work. You'll also notice that my beads are already kind of bobbing up and down, and you don't need to fix this, but if it really bothers you, all we can do is pass back forth, back through them, in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to go weave up and down through each one of these beads to sort of cinch the line together. As you get practice with your thread tension and holding it tight, you might not even need to do this step and they just might automatically sit side by side. It's especially easy to do if you're working with delicas. And at my final stitch, you'll notice that I'm going to end up in the opposite direction as my tail, which also can be a factor if you want to do this or not. 
It's not a big issue, this just means that my working thread is going to end up going in this direction and my piece is going to work going up instead of going down towards my tail. No matter what you do, you can always just end the tail as well. So now, we finished our ladder stitch base. We're going to next up start with the flat herringbone itself. So for this, we're going to work two at a time. I've added two of my first color seed bead. I'm going to pass down the next bead over. And that's my first stitch. You'll notice that the beads kind of form a V shape as you pull tight. And that is how our herringbone starts to form. To set it for the next stitch, I'm just going to pass up through the next bead, add on my next two, and pass immediately down the next set. I'm going to set up once more, add on two more beads, and pass down. For my final stitch, I'm going to go up one, add on my last set of beads, and go down the last one. Now, we are at the end of the row, which means we need to do something a little special in order to change our thread so that we can move back. This weave works in the both back and forth motions. I started from right to left, I went left to right, and when I do the next stitch, it's going to go right to left again. Now, if you're not comfortable with working two sides, whenever you reach another row, feel free to just flip it over. Then you'll be working back in the same place you were. But eventually you'll want to get used to working in both directions. Now, to change the direction of my thread, I'm coming out of the end here. I'm just going to pass up the first row, like so, just the second bead, second from the last bead, just that first row, so that I end up in between the two rows here. Now I'm going to take my thread and pass through the last bead of the second row, and I will have completed my turnaround. Now I'm ready to continue my herringbone. So to do that, I'm going to add my two, and then I'm just going to pass through the second row. We are essentially done with the first row, and we don't need to touch it anymore. So now I've got my third row started up. I'm going to move over, picking up the next bead just on the second row. Add on my next two beads, pass through the next bead just on the second row. Once again, picking up the next bead just on the second row, adding my beads, passing through the next bead, picking up the next bead on the row, adding on my last set of two beads, and passing through the last bead just on the second row. Now I need to turn my thread again. So since I am over here, the last bead of our second row, I'm just going to pass through the next bead on the second row. So that I end up in between the second and third rows. From there, all I'm going to do is pass up through the last bead in the third row. Now I'm all set to do my fourth row. And that's how you continue on. We're just going to go back and forth adding more rows until we have the length that we want. So once you're going along your way, you might find yourself in a situation where you run out of thread and you need to add some more. Now, this is really simple to fix in herringbone, and it doesn't even require any knots. So I'm starting from the very end on my left side. All I'm going to do is go down four or more beads on the next column over. I'm going to then go up four or more beads. You can go all the way up to the top if you want, but at least through four beads. Go down four or more beads, and finally up four or more beads. Once you pull that tight, you are good to clip your thread on your piece, and that will secure everything. 
Attaching a new thread is going to be the same, but backwards. I want to start coming out of the very rightmost bead, so I'm going to count four rows back. So I have one, two, three, four. So from row four, I'm going to go down at least four beads. I'm going to pull my thread until I've got about an inch of a tail here. I want to hang on to it a little bit, but and you want to make sure that you hang on to that so it doesn't slip out when you do your next rows. From there, I'm going to go up at least four beads, but I also don't want to reach the very top bead here. Otherwise, I'm going to bridge a gap that I don't want to just yet at the very tips. You see how they're open? The beads are open between those two rows. I want to keep that for at least a few rows longer. So we pull through, and once you get the hang of this, you can actually pull down the tail a little bit so that you leave a little bit less thread wastage. I know with fire line that could be really important, but otherwise, if you're not comfortable with that for the thread to slip out, just go ahead and leave it a longer tail. Then we go down row number three. You'll notice I've skipped the top column. I'm meeting it at the same place. My thread is coming out of this bead, so I want to meet it parallel with the next column. And finally, row number four, I meet the thread parallel. My thread's coming out of this bead, so I'm just moving directly across and going all the way up. And my thread is not going anywhere. From here, you can go ahead and continue your stitches like normal until you have the length that you need. Now you might also need to use this in a bracelet application, so you're going to need to cinch the ends at the top together so that you can finish your pattern and make everything cinch together so that you don't have these loose ends in place. And the easiest way to do that is to basically create a herringbone stitch but without adding extra beads and then joining these sides. So right now I'm coming out of a left side, I'm not going to add any beads and I'm just going to go down to the right side. Then I'm going to go up the third bead on my row, and then go backwards through my second bead. And this creates a join It's a little close together. I'm going to continue on by moving forward, do another stitch without adding any beads, jump across the next gap, go backwards to form a loop, go back through, add another stitch, but don't add any beads, and then close the final gap. I'm going to also go down the last bead, and go ahead and turn my thread as usual because these gaps are a little wide for my comfort and they're still kind of up and down so I kind of want to go over and reinforce every single one of these gaps again. So I'm just going backwards the same way and just like we did with the ladder stitch, we're basically creating a reverse ladder stitch on the top. So I'm going backwards, pulling those together through the next column, going up, picking up the previous bead, wrapping around and pulling it tight, going back through, and so forth. And then you've cinched those gaps together, and you can attach a clasp on the other end if you so choose. And that is about it on the basics of herringbone stitch. This is a very versatile stitch that you can use on a lot of different projects. And relatively speaking, it's a pretty quick stitch to throw together. So let me know down in the comments below what sort of herringbone projects are in store for you, and what would you like to do with it? If there's anything else in the herringbone family or even other bead stitches, let me know down in the comments below. 
as well as come and join us at our Facebook group at Creations from Lessons with Odin to give suggestions and to connect with a bunch of other BD peoples. And I think that will do it from me. Be sure to like up this video and subscribe if you want to see more bullshit from me. Check out my other basic series that's going to be growing rapidly as we speak. And, of course, leave suggestions for any stitches that you would like me to cover. Be sure to check out my other YouTube shenanigans. I do more than just jewelry up on this channel, as well as some writing. So if you like sci-fi, be sure to check out my blogs and my books down below. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And, of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, feel free to let me know down below. And I will see you next time.